Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Hello, hello, mix vlogs. This is Raynan, and it's um, it's my uh, Tuesday here, uh, June June fourteen, six thirty p.m. So, kararating ko lang from work, and I just found out, na uh, looking through my videos, na there's uh, one video that I uh, had already gotten. Uh, 600 views yun yung uh, saan mas maganda tumira sa Australia or sa Canada so since uh, I've been, uh, I lived in uh, in Australia for 4 years before we settled down here so by the way uh, we just got our uh, citizenship um, so we're now uh, proud Canadians since uh, April 11th uh, 2022 so we applied the uh, <coughs> For citizenship uh, back in 2019 so actually you only need uh, to uh, since kung dumating ka rito as a permanent resident you only need three years to be eligible to apply for citizenship so that's what we did because uh, I, uh, my plan was to go back to Australia after getting my uh, getting our citizenship here and eventually uh, move back there but it didn't pan out just like I, I planned it because uh, there was a greater uh, a greater plan you know uh, we had the uh, um, you know the health crisis that we are facing uh, that we've we are facing and up until now we're facing it and so um yung testing in test citizenship test was was put on hold and so we had to wait until they get their uh, acts together and eventually um we got the uh the letter to uh, do it online it took a year or so before we finally uh, wrote the test and then from there we still waited because there was some uh, something that went on that you know they instead of uh, doing the ones that uh, came in first you know the first applicants uh, that were that were waiting instead what they did was they did the uh, the applicants uh, from 2021 and onwards so that that took us a while and well eventually uh, we got it and uh, no problem we got our uh, passport after more than a week and so yeah well well uh, the video is all about uh, San Mas Maganda Tumira so I'm gonna explain it to you since uh, we're already here and uh, I'm just gonna start with uh, Canada so right now here in Canada inflation rate is high it's 8.5 uh, I guess so we're gonna get the inflation rate uh, inflation reading I guess if not tomorrow by Friday this week so by I guess 15 it's either uh, June 15 or June 17 okay so uh, but uh, the thing is it's uh the inflation is high and so we drive on the right side of the road and we are close to uh, the U.S. and as such, you know, you can just um, drive your car down to the border. When you, if you have visa or if you're a citizen, then you just uh, show show your uh, passport and they'll let you in. You know, and then what else? Uh, the ease of getting here. So mostly, uh, you know, you mga immigrants here, but unlike there are uh, there are now. Uh, thousands of uh, Ukrainian immigrants now uh, immigrants are refugees because they are granted like I think a temporary uh, a visa for two years to work and uh, to work and live here and then after that uh, it's it's for them to decide if they want to extend it or they want to go back but obviously this war is not going to end anytime soon right so so uh, uh, from from here to Asia it's gonna um, from if if I'm gonna going home if I'm going back to the Philippines, I will have to. So I live 
here in Saskatchewan is it it's in the middle of uh, Canada so you have from from the west uh, from western side of Canada you have BC Alberta and then Saskatchewan Manitoba and then Ontario after that you have Quebec and then I think on that side on on the Atlantic side you have um, Nova Scotia and then PEI which is Prince Edward Island Labrador and then on top you have uh, I'm not sure you uh, Yukon here on this side so okay well uh, so from from Saskatchewan if I'm going to going back to the Philippines so it's gonna cost me a lot more like at least 1500 so well mostly a lot of uh, immigrants are coming from Asia you know that's one thing that you should uh, look into you know if you're uh, coming from Asia it's gonna and, and depending on uh, where you want to settle you know it's it's gonna cost you if you want to go back and forth right and the ease of going coming here you know a, a lot of uh, immigrants you know future immigrants are plan uh, want to uh, come here and I know there are a lot of uh, immigration uh, lawyers uh, who are offering their services but you see you can save a lot more if you just do the uh, you know you do a due diligence you know do the research and go go to uh, the uh, official uh, uh, Canada Immigration and Citizenship uh, website where there are a lot of streams you know there are there are uh, ex uh, Canadian experience um, there are a lot of uh, streams there and you know be because basically all these immigration uh, lawyers they're gonna they're just gonna input all your information into the system of uh, the CIC you know CIC.gc.ca I think that's the uh, the official website so what they're gonna do is just ask you all the uh, the pertinent uh, documents that they need so that they can input it on the website so where where you can you can have your uh, you can have your profile and then they the uh, the government can raffle off or invite you if you uh, make uh, you know certain uh, certain points you know because there are it's a point system actually if you're if you're coming here as an immigrant like uh, professionals you know there are a lot of uh, people needed here tradesperson you know welders mechanics um, uh, anything under the sun they they need all of it because the labor market right now is very tight and there are a lot of job openings especially here in Saskatchewan um, you know they couldn't find uh, um, people to work uh, you know not really people to work but you know what had happened like there are a lot of people who, uh, who have perished uh, because of this um, the the health emergency you know the virus and and so you know uh, and then all all of uh, after that people who are who are already 65 you know those baby boomers they already starting to retire and and you know there are less people being born every every year so they need a lot of people coming in to uh, replace all these uh, workers that have retired or have uh, passed over right okay so so do your own due diligence you know research it's on the website and then from there you know but firstly mainly uh, first so that you can open uh, or you can uh, uh, make uh, your own profile on the website is you need English test it's either uh, uh, I think only IELTS is uh, is um, is uh, allowed or what you call that is you know yung yung kaila what you needed is an IELTS test so you need to uh, get an IELTS test so that you can make your own uh, profile on the website and then from there you they'll go the the website you know the the website will gonna ask you 
once you get your uh, once you get your profile up and running it, there are uh, some some questions in there you know what are your age and your background your educational background your experience and then from there you're gonna get points and then if you uh, I think I think uh, the more the more points you get the better chance for you to get uh, invited to apply for a permanent residency so do your own research and it's pretty easy and if you can't uh, figure out something you know you can you can always uh, go to uh, forums uh, especially Canada uh, Canada visa I think uh, it's the website canadavisa.com they have forums there and then there are certain topics there that there are a lot of people who uh, who who uh, contributes to that uh, forum, and uh, you can ask any questions, especially about imi immigrating from uh, wherever place, from uh, India, from Pakistan, from uh, from Philippines, from anywhere from Asia, right? So yeah, you go there, and then and then that's where uh, you can get a lot of answers. And then, as you all know. Um, you know once you get here uh what happened to me was uh we got here from uh, australia and then as soon as i i landed here uh, that was in uh, september i applied uh, for a study uh, for, to study and so uh it's, it was just across the apartment where we live uh, prior prior to moving here in our house so so it was pretty easy for me and i I studied welding. I got uh, a grant from the government, so I also get uh, I also got a uh, student loan, which uh, I paid in in a year, because you know. Uh, so I was making more money than what I used to. Pri uh, when I arrived here, when I arrived here, I worked as a cook, so I work as a cook. The whole time I was uh, study, also studying, so I was studying in the morning up until at least three o'clock, four o'clock, and then at five o'clock I went straight to uh, to the uh, restaurant where I previously worked for for five years, and uh, what else? Uh, you know, once you get here, you know the the temptation of uh, taking on too much debt is is really it's really uh you know it's it's it, it's so easy to get a car loan you know and to get really in debt so be be watchful on that cuz once you get really get into debt and you know you lose your job and that's the end of everything so you know once you get here learn uh, you know look around if you find a, a much cheaper cheaper car then you know just go for it you know because especially here in this town we don't have um, a public transportation to go around town so you really need uh, a good vehicle a really good one so that you get don't get stranded in the middle of a snowstorm right and the, the license you know your license you know there is there are certain countries that can get a uh, uh, reciprocity license. So, like uh, Australia, I got uh, I just turned in my Australian uh, driver's license and they converted it to a, a Canadian one. Although it wasn't what I, what I was expecting because my Australian license was a full license, but I couldn't get a. Um, I couldn't get uh, a driving abstract because they don't have that in Australia. So what they instead gave me here to, uh, you know, they they convert my Australian driver's license into a Canadian, but I'm on a GDL. It's a graduated driver's license. All right. So I have to go from novice one and then novice two and then a full license. And since then, I've been uh, full license now. And uh, what else? Um, you know, banking. There are at least five major banks here. You got RBC, um, CIBC, BMO, uh, Scotia Bank, and TD. 
all right so you know as for uh, jobs oh the the economy the economy uh, well i'd say the economy is not it's not really that good right now uh and then mainly here in this uh in this area it is uh agriculture where wheat canola flax um what else uh wheat canola flax uh there's so many stuff i mean i i just forget the rest of it you know but th those are the main uh barley you know uh, those are the main uh, agricultural products around here and there are also one potash mine being developed just right around uh, around 50 kilometers away from here uh, so there's one potash mine owned by BHP and then uh, one potash mine on that southwest uh, southwest corner where it's owned by Nutrien it's been it's been in uh, in in operation for a while uh and then there are so many potash mine uh dotted across uh, Saskatchewan there's also mining uh also oil and gas um diamond diamond mines and uh gold mines so so it's pretty uh mainly uh natural resources and Saskatchewan there are at least a million, a million, a million and a half uh, inhabitants here in Saskatchewan. So, if you want to, if you want to go to BC, where there are a lot more, a lot more uh, immigrants, and then Toronto to the to the east, uh, you know, it's the the price, the housing price are so astronomical that for me it doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, living there. With all the the luxury of uh, you know the uh, luxury of the uh, restaurants, you know all the all the amenities uh, you can find in the the metro city, which is in in uh, BC in in Vancouver and Toronto. But I'd rather not live there because you know I don't want to pay for you know for the house that are that are uh, overvalued for the rest of my my miserable life. You know, I'd rather stay here in a small rural town but it's not ro actually a rural town it's a small uh, city with 5,000 people at least there are um, I would say around uh, 400 500 uh, Filipinos here in in the in this in this city and uh, surrounding areas or maybe even more so yeah because there are also a lot uh, smaller villages where you know but mainly the house housing price here is is so dirt cheap you know i would i would live here if i if i could you know because living here you know you have a nice um you know you have a ba backyard you have a nice lot you know a big lot at least 500 square meters are a lot here the house is 1100 square foot and you know it's more cheaper rather than living in uh in in vancouver or toronto or you know half of your paycheck goes to to rent or maybe three quarters of your paycheck goes to a mortgage and you don't have any any discretionary uh spending left to do you know so yeah well and then also the weather weather here is real that really sucks because uh, in the dead of the winter you know during the deep freeze it's minus minus 35 at night time and with the wind blowing probably minus 45 and i have experience here minus 52 with wind chill is that that is with the wind minus 52 and uh, our windows were solid frozen and you know the the heater well the, the house has heaters 
you know every house has a heater is here but but you know um so you have so basically what you uh you know when you buy a house here you have mortgage so the cost of uh, owning a house here you have a mortgage or oh, oh, I mean, we're, we're going to put that into another video, but, you know, just to uh, give you a, a snippet of uh, what, you know, bills are waiting for you, utility bills. So in the winter, you need, you need uh, natural gas. So you have uh, heating gas and then you have electricity, hydro, they call it hydro and uh, internet, which is we're paying um it's we are we're with sax saskatel so we're paying close to 70 dollars a month in uh, the hydro electricity in the winter goes up to 100 150 170 and then um gas the heating gas it depends when if when it's really that cold goes to 225 250 and then you have well those are the bills that basically you have to pay and then you have water the water bill um you have to pay that uh to the um municipal uh, hall to the municipal government or city government uh right around 150 and then you have your house uh, whatever house you choose you know if you plan on staying on a apartment um apartments are two bedrooms around eight hundred dollars and um the heating uh heating uh the, it includes the the heating so you don't have to pay for that so you just have to worry your uh internet and uh and the water is also included uh on the on the uh on the rent so you only have to if you're uh renting a two bedroom apartment right maybe right around eight hundred dollars so you just have to pay your electricity and your internet so so i guess um i've covered it covered it all and uh if you have any other questions and uh you know just put it on the comment box below and uh, get to you as soon as I can you know uh, if I miss something you know if you want to ask me well, whatever whatever is um, necessary or uh, whatever I can help you with you know just put it down there and I'll I'll do a video if that, of that uh, if ever you needed one all right I'll see you again next time have a great day and uh, enjoy the rest of the work week be safe bye bye